my god you guys i am done with my costume ah! um i'm gonna try it all on right now for the first time to see how it looks okay omg this dipper Rosie! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you started. I know you were trying to get me. Hi! <laughs> my name is Rosie! <laughs> oh my gosh, now that I got white nails, my teeth look yellow. <gasps> edit, I'm gonna have to edit them. <laughs> Hello world, it's Wednesday, May... Whatever it is, May 24th. And we're leaving for Fanime tomorrow! Say bye-bye. I finished my costumes. Mostly finished my costumes before the con. Can you guys believe it? I can't believe it. Um, all I'm doing right now is finishing my Kagura earrings. Kagura from Inuyasha. My suspicious looking beads. Um, so I'm finishing just that right now. We just have to clean up pack. This is the most one I've ever been before a con. Um, and it's weird. It's, I've been con crunching like for two months already. So I'm excited for the con. Um, let me show you guys this stuff. Ta da! Look, here's my pretty cure costume. Look, ah, it is so sparkly, shiny, and oh my gosh, you guys, check this out. Magnets! Excuse me. I feel like Jesse over here breaking bad. Magnets. Um, there's that. There's my pretty cure wig. And I put, oh my gosh, look, it has little water droplets, rhinestones, and sparkles, and tinsel. I'm so excited. There's that. And then here is my Cleo wig ready to go. I added more tinsel. Then we have a Monster High group for Sunday. Hopefully I can edit and put this video up today before we leave for Fanime. Because I wanted to show off mainly how I made my Pretty Cure cosplay. So if you want to see that, um, keep watching. I'll put all my progress and stuff right here. And then... Time to get back to work. Okay. Goodbye. See you guys on Fanime. Ah! Well, before I show Pretty Cure stuff, just wanted to pop in to um, show my Kagura stuff that I'm trying on right now. Whoa, where am I going with the camera? Ta-da! One of my feathers broke. But ta-da! I just made these this week of uh, foam clay. So I made these and I got these tips. They're totally not <laughs> the same color as my skin, but we'll see what how it looks with makeup. And then I made the feathers with foam clay too. Oh. And then I just put some Velcro, so it'll just like stick on like that, but it keeps falling, so I might glue a bobby pin to it. This is just clip-on bangs. Ta-da! <laughs> and then this is another like clip-on hair piece that I just kind of wrapped around to make big messy bun can you see that okay. ah. and what are you doing right now working on jay's west wig so we're still con crunching <laughs> i finished my stuff but now jay has two wigs this one and his hawks wig to do well you're a hawks wig to do jay's recording um so he would he asked me for some help um, since I'm the resident wig girl, we're styling that right now, and it's Wes from Pokemon. So I have to do the dishes. Sorry. Yeah, he was doing the dishes while I was wig styling. He was pulling away of the house husband. Um, was it from again Pokemon Coliseum? Right. Yeah. Okay. I was like, what? What from there? <laughs> Wes? Yes, that's where he's from. Yeah. So that's what we're working on right now, and it's 8 p.m. Wednesday. Wait, did I say Thursday earlier? Did I say that it was Thursday or Wednesday? Did anyway, you even say the day? I don't know. It's <laughs> it's Wednesday and tomorrow's Fanime. Ah, I think that's why my brain is just kind of like, woo woo woo. I'm already in excited mode. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't hit him with the uh, it's Wednesday, my dudes. <gasps> it's Wednesday, my. It's now 1:30 in the morning, and we're packing, we're trying to pack all of our stuff and get it ready. Our costumes. Food ready. And yeah, it's Fanime. <laughs> <laughs> He's pantsless, so yeah. Okay, we're gonna finish packing and then I we're gonna go to Fanime. That is still technically pantsless. I didn't say you were underwearless. Okay, okay, bye. Okay, so here's where I talk about my Pretty Cure cosplay. So this is Cure La Mer from Tropical Rouge Pretty Cure. She's a mermaid princess magical girl. So I wanted to make this super sparkly and I was really inspired by like dance costumes, drag costumes, performance costumes. 
Um, I used my old Sailor Pluto costume as a base. It was already taken apart, um, so I used that as a pattern to make her since it's really similar and I knew I wanted to make it like a leotard with a skirt and I knew I wanted to utilize performance mesh for it, for the nude illusion. So here I patterned the bodysuit somebody wanted to try it on um, and then I just drew on it where I thought things should go and I used some paper that I had to kind of pattern the skirt out and figure out where the little scales were gonna go and so I just did that for a long time kind of like figuring things out figuring the placement then I used some muslin and leftover fleece I had to start patterning out the pieces to make a mock-up and then I also decided I wanted to make the skirt into separate scales so that it could have some movement to it um, and I decided to sacrifice my cure mint skirt which was my previous pretty cure cosplay that I wore I made it back in 2015 for the anime expo pre-cure army that we had um, so it was kind of to sacrifice a skirt but I needed the horsehair braid from it and Luna gave it a nice little send off before I took it apart so that was sweet. So then here it is after I stitched in the horsehair braid into the mock-up and I also hand basted a lot of it together. So there's a horsehair braid on the bottom. I actually did like a double layer of it and I hand stitched all the pieces around here and then I patterned out the sleeve here and then I also patterned out the rest of the top just the half since I'll be able to you know copy the pattern for the other side and here's the zipper in the back of the pattern and thankfully the top the curves around the top follow exactly of a sailor scout pattern like that armor that they have so i was able to use my sailor pluto pattern like so well it, it worked perfectly for this and here i am trying it on and checking to see how everything fits and the movement um and the sleeve checking all the little scales around here and then it does have attached little undies underneath and here's a skirt cut out of the actual fabric. I used some stiff interfacing in it and then I used fusible tape to stick on the horsehair braid vertically throughout the skirt, almost like boning. And then I did a double layer of the horsehair braid along the bottom. It's kind of hard to see here, but um, I wish I had actual boning to give it more structure, but this is all I had on hand already. So I just used this to kind of make it a little bit more stiff and to have some support so then I can stick all the scales on top of the skirt. Then I put the lining to it and then I sewed it all together and here it is pinned to the dress form and here is the back. I just left a gap for the zipper right there. So next I moved on to the scales for the skirt. I had a lot of pretty fabrics in my sash already. Here's my little helper again. Um, so I just basically cut out the shapes that I patterned for each tier of the skirt and I also cut it out of really thick interfacing for it. And here I am cutting out the hollow organza and since it's a finicky fabric I cut out all the pieces of the organza and then also all the pieces of the like the plain fabric it was going to be on top of and I added the interface to the plain fabric and then I pinned them all together well clipped them and then I surged them with my sewing machine I have a um, overcast or overlock foot that I use on my regular sewing machine that basically surges the edges without needing the serger so I did that to each scale so I simultaneously surged and flatlined it so the organza colored fabric and then the interface were all together as one piece so then I can bead on top of it and I got these flat paillette sequins that look totally like fish scales to me so I put those on there and I'm so excited um, I pinned them on the skirt to see how it looked and they were shining sparkling and looking so cute and then I also decided along with those paillette sequins I was going to add uh, seed beads and sequins onto that so here's a bunch of the scales that I had already searched here's what the back looks like I used clear thread to sew them all on and then once I um, did all the bead work then I would hand sew the backing on to finish each scale and here's a needle that I broke while I was hand sewing and doing some beading um, and here's a finished scale I also added some more like rhinestones to that one to see oh here's the paillettes in action you can see how they capture the light it looks so beautiful here's my serger my serging foot and here's me serging a bunch of the um, third tier scales of the skirt I just went and just kind of assembly lined it and searched a bunch of them so let me fast forward this And here's all the skirt scales surged and placed onto the skirt to see how they look and get the placement. Um, there's that finished one, you can see how sparkly it is. And oh my gosh, I was so excited already seeing it start to come together here. But instead of all the clear paillettes, AliExpress did send me some white ones instead and I had run out of the clear ones, so um, I just put those aside for now. Look at this. Oh, perfect. <laughs> oh my God. 
Isn't it great? Chris! I know, it's my dream. <laughs> I have goosebumps everywhere. Next, I jumped to the top, which is that same hollow organza fabric, but on top of spandex this time. So I, I surged the edges together to flatline it, just like the scales. But then when I put the pink and the blue together, the blue was a little too pale for me. And so I decided I was going to paint it. So I just used a mixture of some fabric paints and a little bit of acrylic paint to kind of lightly sponge it onto the fabric since I wasn't changing the color that drastically. Um, just to get it a little bit more teal. Um, and then I did a lot of hand sewing to sew the layers, the spandex lining and then the outer fabric together um, just because the fabric's so finicky I didn't want it to rip um, and then here it is all pinned together so far it's looking great so far I was so excited already and now was finally time for me to attempt the bodysuit scales which I was really nervous about here I was cutting out the mock-up pattern and then when I cut it out of the spandex and mesh first I surged all around the outside perimeter of the two pieces I put those together to kind of like flatline them around the edge and then I went in and pinned it all so I can sew the scales on the inside and it would be a little bit more stable but I did not use any sort of stabilizer I did not glue it to the mesh which I should have in hindsight that would have made things so much easier but it still came out this is how it came out afterwards it's not too bad considering um you know it's all stretch slippery fabrics and i didn't stabilize it but um you live and you learn i got it done it was very stressful um but here's the rest of the bodysuit including the sleeves all cut out of the fabric and ready to go and the bottom i cut out of both the mesh and the spandex and i already surged them together and hemmed the leg holes here and then here's the skirt trying to inset it, um, sew it together with the bottom, and it was tough wrestling this in my sewing machine, but I managed to get it together. And here's a whole bodysuit all together here. Um, but And then here's me trying it on, but it did have a weird pucker, you can see in the middle of the front. Um, but everything else fit and the scales looked great, and I hand basted it in the zipper. The pucker's in the back too, so I had to undo those parts where it was puckering in the front, and I hand stitched it back together, then it looked much better. The back, I just kind of tacked it together with hand stitches to kind of fix it. And then here's the top pin onto there, and it's coming together. It's starting to look like the outfit. And then I pinned everything on and tried it on just to see, and oh my gosh, I was so excited to see it all coming together, and it was fitting right and looking just how I planned. Ah! And then next was the sleeve. So her sleeves have these lines on it, which to me, my mind translated it as pin tucks for some reason. So I pin tucked by hand this fabric, which pin tuck is like a little tiny like seam across the fabric. So I had to measure all the lines out, mark them with Taylor's chalk. I ironed the seams, like ironed the fold on all of them, sewed it all, all over, and then I could start making the sleeves. Oh, and then to hem the sleeves, I used my rolled hem foot to get a tiny, tiny hem on the edge. It's super tricky and some parts didn't come out right. Um, but then for the sleeve itself, I use a French seam so that way on the inside all the edge was encased so it wouldn't fray. Then I had my winter soldier moment. I made myself a little arm so that way I can get the proper placement of the sleeve and stuff. And then I patterned the little hand thing. And here is my fake arm on my dress form along with the sleeve. Oh, and I did break another needle while sewing the sleeves. And then for the collar, I patterned it out and pinned it, sewed it all together. Here's where I notched the curves, but I actually hated how it came out. So I repatterned it and then it was better. So then here it is out of the actual fabric, the spandex. So sewed it, again, cut all the notches and everything. And here it is on the dress form. I loved how it looked, but it was a little bit too wide in the front. So I had to like sew it. And then I tacked it a few places down on the bodysuit. Next were the pants. I just took a old pair of leggings to take apart to use for the pattern. Cut it out of the spandex, sewed it together, made the leggings, and made sure to fit it and tailor it to my body. And then this was the hard part trying to figure out the mesh illusion because the bottom part of the leggings have like a weird like point and like edge to them. So I made tubes out of the mesh fabric and then I put on the leggings and put on the tubes underneath and then pinned them together. And yeah, I was wearing them when I pinned them so I did get quite a few scratches, but I pinned them and then I sewed it like that to get that um, edge. And I also added a little stirrup on the bottom on my feet so that way it can kind of help pull the legs down so the, the leggings wouldn't be riding up. 
and then I started adding some sparkles to it I added a lot of pearls and white rhinestones to it so it looks very bridal and also some fake water droplets that I got on Amazon that are so cute and I love putting them all over this costume they're so perfect um, and also this time I switched and I got an actual sewing room my mom let me use a room at her house for a sewing room so I actually had space I didn't have to sew on the kitchen counter anymore Next was a wig. Cure La Mer has these giant like clam things in her hair with pearls. So to make them lightweight, I used these clear acrylic spheres and then I painted the inside with some glitter Mod Podge and metallic white pearl paint and then some plain white pearl paint and just painted the inside and closed them together to make the big pearls. Then for the hair itself, I started with four white long Amazon wigs, which I dyed using Rit Synthetic Dye. I think it's Rit Dye More. And I used the pink color for the pink and then for the blue, I used a mix of their blue color with their teal a little bit and I just used really hot water and then I dyed one wig pink one wig blue and then one wig pink on top with blue on bottom and one wig blue on top with pink on bottom and I just had to do it just very carefully um, but it worked and I just left them in the dye for a while I think maybe like 15 minutes 15 20 minutes and then took them out and let them dry outside and look at that beautiful um, line that I got after the wigs dried I rinsed them with cold water to get all of the dye off and then I soaked them a little bit with some fabric softener to get them a little bit soft and they'll be easy to detangle um, but the dye still was transferring a little bit when I was working with the hairs so I actually went back and washed the wigs again with some laundry detergent soap to kind of really wash it um, I was nervous that the color was going to come out a bit but it didn't I was able to wash them get them all nice and clean um, and then I got to work so I spliced the wigs together I actually added a piece of felt in the back of the wig on like on the bottom and then I sewed in a bunch of the wefts on there to give it length um, and also to get that double gradient that way I didn't have to dye one wig pink blue pink I just dyed you know one wig pink and blue another wig blue and pink and then sewed them together and then I had the extra wigs for extra hair especially for the clamshells um, and then here is the wig after it was spliced together and then here it is after I washed it with the detergent to make sure it was all clean and then this is what it looked like I was starting to play around with the bangs a little bit here's what it looked like from the back and I did like kind of layer it and here was me trying it on to make sure the gradient and the colors were looking right then back to the clamshells and pearls I used some copper wire that I got to kind of bend it to the general shape of the shells and then I just used some quilt batting to kind of cover it up and I just glued it on like kind of however and then I was using the pearl one of the extra pearls as a guide to make sure I was getting the size right so I just glued that um, that batting over top and then I painted them pink um, to make sure that they'll kind of blend in in case anything shows through the hair and then I just started gluing the hair on I use this glue called uhu glue um, make sure you are there's like good ventilation and proper stuff while you use that glue it's very strong uh, but I use that glue to kind of smooth on pieces of the hair I would cut little pieces of hair and then glue each little section on and I also would heat up some sections and like kind of curve them first to make it easier especially around the edges because it was really hard to get the hair around the edges of the clamshell and here it is almost done and I was testing it to make sure things were looking good and it was the right size and shape and everything and then to actually stick them in the wig once they were done I used the copper wire and underneath the wig cap I made like an oval like an oval headband to kind of sit on top of my head and I had some parts sticking out from the oval and the parts where I was sticking out those I stuck into the clamshells so each clamshell had two wire points sticking out from it um, connected to the copper underneath the wig cap and then once i stuck the clamshells on i used a piece of felt that i painted pink um, and glued that i glued down the wire that was kind of inside too and then i glued that felt to kind of keep the two sides of the clamshells together then i started the process of adding tinsel throughout the wig so i added um, clear holographic pink and silver and blue tinsel all over and then I put it up into rollers to set some curls and also teased it so I did that all throughout the wig it took a lot of work to get it all curled up all the tinsel in all curled up but um, it was really fun and I was getting some nice mermaid hair and got a lot of nice fun ringlets too and then I also added some hair in the front towards the bangs to um, add her long sections because I accidentally cut them too short at first um, so I added those curled up the top as well I'm um, actually curled it before I finished I actually added the the clamshells to make sure it's all curled and stuff so here it is look at this curly wig it looks like that girl from Steven Universe kind of if it was all pink um, here's what the clamshells attached and then I was doing the finishing 
curls and finishing touches and I styled the bangs here it was from the back and then here was the wig all finished in the pictures you really can't see how sparkly it is but the tinsel and everything makes it so sparkly and so cute okay and then i went back to the bodysuit so i finished hand stitching the top to the outfit and then for the yellow trim i just used the pattern for the bodysuit that i had and kind of traced that to get the shape of the yellow trim right and then i cut it out of some thin eva foam basically like craft foam that i had and then used contact cement to glue the yellow fabric the spandex onto the foam and here's a little wrist and hand doohickey things all made up and then she has a little pouch and the magical girl henchin device thing and jay got that for me for mother's day so then i didn't have to make the pouch and here's me trying on everything so far taking a look seeing how everything fits the yellow was just pinned on at this point and then the brooch um chrissy plays dress up she actually has a file available to purchase of the 3d print for the shell brooch and so i went to the library and was able to get it printed out for free so i got that printed here i am placing it on to see how it looks and then i sanded it down primed it sanded it again put some more primer and then i spray painted the colors but then i went back in with nail polish different sparkly nail polishes to give it some more shine and then glued the magnets to the back and then ta-da it was done and sticks on with magnets it's so beautiful thank you Chrissy for the file next was her tail mermaid bow thing um, so I just patterned it out of paper and then I used some um, pink cotton some interface a blue cyan and two layers of a sparkly tool to make it and I just sewed those all together and I forgot how much the sparkle tool sheds and leaves glitter and confetti everywhere um, and to stick it in I decided to go the route of modern obies where they have the pre-made bow where they have a little thing that just kind of sticks in there in the back so I decided to do that to make it easy on and off in case I needed to go to the bathroom in this so I just put a piece of elastic in the back to kind of help guide it and then I use copper wire to build a little structure that will stick in there oh and I also stuck some wire within the bow itself to make sure the bow kind of sticks up right then for the pouch tails like the little ribbons I use that same pink cotton and glitter tool and I just kind of patterned it out quickly out of paper and just sewed it together and just stuck it on the back for all the little bubble accessories around, I just use foam clay to just make the little balls and stick them together. And for the ones on the wig, I strung them through some clear thread and I put a little bit of glue to make sure none of them would slip off the string. And then here's the ones for the shoes. And then after I coated all of the foam pieces with glitter Mod Podge, and here they are attached to the wig. And then for the shoes, I started with the saran wrap and masking tape pattern. And then I just used that to make the shoe covers i used a layer of white spandex and then a layer of white like i don't know polyester that i had um which i wish i should have used one layer instead of two but it was fine i just sewed the pieces together and then i used a flap kind of on the top with velcro to make it easy on and off so that way i can keep the inner structure of the actual shoe there and here it is with the little foam pieces stuck on and i just used contact cement to glue them glue the cover to the shoe and here was the shoes all finished and i love how the little foam balls came out they look so cute especially all glittery with the mod podge and now the convention was a few days away and we we're in crunch time folks i had to really hurry up to get all the beading and sequencing done so i was definitely in a rush And for all the rhinestoning, I used Gem Tack as my preferred glue for it. I know a lot of people use E6000, but I don't really have good luck with that. Um, but the Gem Tack, I would put it in these other little tubes. Like I had this one that made it really easy and precise to put the little glue. I also have some syringes made specifically for glue that I got on Amazon. All the stuff I got on Amazon <laughs> um, to put the glue in to make it easier as well. And then I got these little trays and this little wax picker thing that are meant for those those paint by diamond kits um, and it made things so much easier they're not necessary but it is very helpful um, so yeah I added a bunch of rhinestones and pearls everywhere started bedazzling it this was my favorite part of the whole costume was just decorating everything but <laughs> the convention was coming up so I really had to hurry and then those white sequins that I had the paillettes I ended up using them on the bottom row of the skirt um, and I thought it looked really cool so it was kind of nice that they sent me the wrong ones after all um, and here I am hand sewing all of the scales to the skirt i just stitched them in with clear thread and i also glued that yellow trim to the bodysuit i just glued it on um, and then for the bow i decided to add some snaps to the yellow thing um, just to make sure the bow kind of sat flat because the sides the way i patterned it it was kind of too wide so it kept wanting to like 
curl up in itself so I wanted to make sure it stayed nice and open and wide so I added those snaps back there and then I was done with the skirt so there's the final product I didn't manage to finish the rhinestones um, on the bottom layer but that's okay I can always add those later and then I added the fake little water droplets all over the rest of the costume added more sequins and bedazzled everywhere especially on the wig oh and on the wig I also added glitter mod podge to make kind of like highlights and add more glitter everywhere and since it was crunch time I did enlist in my mom's help and she helped me put a lot of rhinestones along the bottom of my bow so she helped me make that all sparkly and here's some pearls that I added to the bodysuit I added pearls and white rhinestones I, I wanted to add more but again I was kind of rushed for time so I just added a few I can always go back and add some more later and there's the bedazzled collar and there's the final costume that was the last step oh and then I added some pearls to my eyelashes because she has pearls in her artwork and ta-da it was all done i finished literally right before we left for fanime okay, guys i am done with my costume ah! um i'm gonna try it all on right now for the first time to see how it looks okay omg this dipper I am so 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 happy! I want to still add more sparkles, but at least everything is complete! Oh yeah, I forgot to pin the pouch on lol! But here's me wearing the costume of Fanime! I'll have my full Fanime vlog coming up soon, but for now here's some shenanigans of me wearing the costume and hanging out, running around with friends. So yeah, thank you so much for watching me talk about how I made this costume. I had a lot of fun working on it, and yeah, here we go! I'm not doing a hard cut there. You're gonna have to suffer with that embarrassment. <laughs>